Welcome to This Week in Tiger Athletics. I'm your host, Haley White, and joining me now is Jared Goodell, and it is his first year as FHSU baseball head coach. Goodell previously coached at Colorado School of Mines for seven seasons and helped turn around the Ore Diggers baseball program, which previously had a streak of 12 straight seasons with a losing record. He quickly built Colorado Mines into a conference power and national power, nearly making the regional title game last season. He is a former FHSU baseball player who spent most of his time as catcher. Welcome to the show, Coach, and welcome back to Hayes. Thank you. Thanks for How having me. How does it feel to be back at your alma mater coaching? It's great. You know, this is uh, you know a program that's that's done a lot for for myself, and and something I've always you know had aspirations to be able to come back and and lead, and and uh, you know it's just it's just great being back at a place I played at, a place I grew up at, and a place that. You know, with Hayes and the school in Fort Hayes, it's 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 a it's a special place to to me and my family. So, when you first heard of the job opening, did you know what, as soon as you heard that you wanted to come back and coach? Yeah, you know, it was one of those things when when it happened. We were at the regional, and and uh, you know, I Curtis Hamakey reached out, you know, emailed and and. Uh, you know that's kind of your main focus at the time is you know the team and, and, and as much work as you put into to get into that point so you want to make sure you you focus on that but you know it's in the back of your mind and and you know there's some excitement there and and uh, but you know it's something it's a job that if if the opportunity ever presented itself it was something I'd always you know had interest in and, and would definitely want to, to take a look at and, and see if it's the best fit you know moving forward. Describe how tough it was leaving Colorado Mines after being so close of making the College World Series last season. Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was more just the guys, you know, the guys uh, that that you kind of raised basically, you know, you mostly all high school guys that you recruit and, and uh, you know, they're basically like your kids, you know, it's, it's, that, it's a fun part to to see him mature and grow and, and, and develop and, and uh, you know that that was probably the hardest part because we did have pretty much most of our team coming back and and a really good recruiting class coming in and um, you know from that standpoint it's it's always going to be difficult leaving something that you're so tied to you know just from a player standpoint and all the work you put in but uh, you know that's something that I'll, I'll definitely be following those guys real close and, and and still in contact with you know their coach and. And, and the players and you know definitely wish them well and we'll definitely be following them all year. You helped turn around the Mines program that had struggled in previous years. Mm -hmm. What was key to that turnaround? I think just you know we talk about the process all the time and, and controlling what you can control and, and focus on the things you can you know you can get better at every day and you know the big thing was just surrounding yourself with good good people you know we had we were able to recruit some really good kids that uh, you know, just did a really good job of develop, and they worked their tails off, and, and they really came together, and they bought into what we were trying to accomplish. You know, from a program standpoint, and uh, you know that was that that's what you want to see as a coach. You know, the, the, the whatever else happens happens, but you know, the, as long as you're doing your best, and, and our guys are working as hard as they can, which they were. You know, that's what the, the results will come. It's a byproduct of that stuff, and. Um, you know, I think that was the main reason is just guys starting to believe and we just kind of getting better and better every year. You know, even though you're coming back to your alma mater, transitioning to a different program will always be tough. How has the staff that you've surrounded yourself with here helped with that transition? It makes it a lot easier. You know, I, I'm, I'm extremely happy with our with our coaching staff and, and having, you know, guys that are from Hayes that played at Fort Hayes, um, you know, that have coached, uh, you know, at TMP or at Hayes High or at Fort Hayes, and just, I mean, they're Hayes guys. And then and then with Keegan Knight, you know, being a, a baseball player playing at a junior college, and and then at a at another MIA double A. Uh, School, you know, it, it helps. You know, it helps knowing that you'll have have these guys here and, and, and that they're invested just as much as as uh, myself in the program. And that's all they want to see is the program do well, just like myself. So, and the FHSU has struggled the last several several years. Also, 
Um, you know, it's been since 2013 since they finished a game over 500. What's going to be the key for your first season to get things going on a different role? Just, you know, the same things, you know, establishing the culture that we did at Mines and, and, and what's, a, you know, holding yourself accountable and, and not making it about yourself. And it's, it's about, the, the, about the program. And, uh, you know, I always, I told the guys the first, uh, first meeting of the year, um, basically like the quote from JFK of, of not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And we talk about that within our program. It's not what this program can do for you, but what you can do for this program. And, and it's not just about one guy. It's it's about all of us and, and, and pulling all in the same direction and and, and holding each other accountable and, and playing for each other and becoming a family. And, and, and to where it's not just about one person, one coach, one player, not about one person. It's about all of us. You were a part of some very successful teams when you played here at Fort Hayes. How did that experience help you work up to the coaching ranks to get to where you are today? Well, I was I was fortunate enough to play for uh, some really good coaches. Uh, you know, Coach Fernelli, you know, playing for him for three years and and, and what he had established here and um, you know and building off of what our athletic director Curtis Hamicky had you know I think had really first started and uh, you know he built off that and then. Uh, you know, and then getting to play for for Matt Ranson for a year, and then coach for him for two years, um, it was it was huge. On on you know, it kind of sets the foundation. You know, as a young coach or as a player that that has an interest in getting into coaching later on, you know, it, I was just blessed to 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 learn from those guys and how to go how to go about your business and just just working hard. You know, and, the, and, and good things will happen when you work hard. FHSU has had only five all MIAA players the last two seasons combined. How do you go about getting the best out of the kids that are here as well as recruiting? For sure, I, I mean, that's uh, good players make good coaches. <laughs> um, so, you know, they're, they're, we have some good players here, you know, and we have some good, uh, some players that, uh, you know, I think are going uh, to surprise a lot of people this year, and, and, and they've been working hard. You know, I think we're only going to be as good as, as how well we come together as a team and how, how well we play together as a team. And, and uh, the guys have been working hard, uh, you know, and we've, we've, we've put them through a lot, you know, through the fall and a lot of newness uh, to them, getting used to what we expect. And, and, and uh, they've been doing a really good job about that. And, and like I said, I think they're, they're starting to really mesh as a, as a team. And um, I know they're excited. You know, I think, uh, you know, we talked about expectations and, uh, you know, controlling what you can control. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the expectation to the outside world is, uh, you know, but we know what we want to accomplish this year. And, and we know we're going to work hard to get better every day. And, and uh, you know, it'll be a byproduct of, uh, of of how we come together and how hard we work together. And and I know they're excited. They're ready to to put those uniforms on and, and play somebody else, get somebody else in another dugout, and and see kind of where we're at. And then just kind of continue to develop and continue to get better. Um, you know, every day, every chance we get. So, do you think that the t the team's chemistry will be key to? getting the team back on that national powerhouse level eventually. Yeah, I mean, I, th I definitely think, you know, the recruiting helps too, you know, in, in the future. But like we told the, told the guys at the beginning of the year, you know, this is, this is the team that's got to set the, to, to right the ship, you know, from, from how we want to go about things and, and just what, what the expectations are as a player and, and, and how we want you representing not only the program, but the, the, the school and the community. And, uh, you know, I think that's key for us moving forward. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm happy with the way that's coming along. And, uh, you know, I think the guys are starting, they're seeing it. You know, I think they, they can see the change and, you know, they know they've been working, you know, and, you know, we keep telling them, uh, you know, that just keep working. Good things to happen to, to, to people who work hard. And as long as they come together as a team, everything will be, be good. We're heading in the right direction, so. Who are some players that you expect to be fighting for some quality time this season? That's a great question. <laughs> there's, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of guys, 
you know, that have gotten a lot better, and, and we just haven't had a, a lot of time to, to see them from an inner squad standpoint or see them out on the field. Um, we got to get out this last uh, Saturday and Sunday, and, and uh, you know, I thought fr Friday and Saturday was really good, and I didn't, I didn't think it was as good on Sunday. And, um, you know, we talked about there's going to be a lot of guys that get opportunities. It's just what they do with it. You know, I don't think... I don't think any any position is set in stone, and, and uh, you know, from the mound to to the field to at the plate, and uh, guys are just going to have to take take advantage of their opportunities. Um, you know, I think there's some good you know seniors that have been through it on the mound that have that have gotten a lot better. I feel like, and, and some young guys that have, that have gotten a lot better. Um, you know, I think some of the young guys are just going to have to kind of learn, get thrown in the fire. You know, I think a lot of guys are going to get thrown in the fire, and, and they're going to have to kind of figure it out as we go, and, and uh, just to keep developing. And um, you know, it, it's always key to start playing somebody else. You know, and especially playing good teams and getting tested, because then you, then you, they'll exploit your weaknesses, and 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 that's something that you know all teams have to go through, and. Um, you know, I think that's that's going to be a big key to this year is just keep working and, and, and you know talking about all the time about staying in the microscope and not looking ahead and you know focus on what's important each and every day and, and they're starting to figure those things out. But I think there's a lot of guys that are uh, that could have really big years. Um, probably too many to name, I guess, because and there's just a lot of guys in that mix and and whoever kind of steps up and earns jobs, uh, I think could. There's, there's quite a few that could, that could really surprise some people this year. And having seniors Ryan Grasser and Jordan Wilkerson both returning, mm -hmm. will, they will fill a huge leadership role on your team. For sure. You know, Ryan's been really good in the middle for us, um, you know, and especially defensively. You know, he's, and he's made a lot of progress, I feel like, in his, in his swing and, and uh, at the plate. Um, but he's kind of, to me, he's kind of that rock in the middle of the, in the, middle of the field that you can kind of r rely on to to make all the routine plays and, and kind of, you know, hopefully to step up and be a, be a, you know, take that leadership role, you know, on the infield and, and um, from a position player standpoint. And then Jordan too, you know, Jordan has a lot of tools and, and um, you know, being a senior and, um, you know, he's made a lot of progress. And, uh, you know, I think as long as they just keep continuing to develop and, you know, sticking with the process and not just reverting back what they're used to. We talk about that all the time and what's comfortable to them. Um, you know, their ceilings aren't as high, you know, and, and just to stick with all that work we put in through through the fall and, and you know, the last two two weeks, three weeks, and, and uh, just keep, you know, keep continuing that, that everyday work ethic. Uh, those guys, you know, I think could do really good things this year. As unbelievable as it may seem, you guys already jump into the season next week already with Northwestern Oklahoma State before hosting New Mexico Highlands during the weekend. What will you be looking for in those first few games of the season? It'll be kind of nice that we get to, you know, play a, a one game Tuesday before a weekend series because, you know, my plan is to get, you know, a handful of pitchers in there and get to see them and, um, you know, and then having all of them ready for that for that four game weekend, and you know that, that's kind of the tricky part when you first open up from a pitching standpoint when you play, you know, basically four games in 36 hours almost. Uh, you know, you, you, your pitching staff will get tested, and uh, that'll that'll you know I think answer a lot of questions. You know, guys are going to get opportunities. You know, and, and we need guys to step up, and it'll kind of show us the depth and and uh, those ever evolving roles within a pitching staff, within a lineup, within you know defensively, and you know that's that's the hard part. You know, being this early and not really having a chance to get outside and practice, you know, an inner squad a whole lot, is those roles haven't really started to get really defined and I think that's just it's one of those ever evolving things um, in a lineup and, and you know defensively or if you're going to come in late if you're if you're if you're going to start the game if you're a pinch runner if you're a defender a pinch hitter things like that um, you know that that'll come with 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 games and uh, but I think that's a big key too is when guys know kind of what their roles are um, you know, it just makes it easier on everybody, and you don't have to focus on such a large thing where, 
you know, it might they might have a small role, but it, it might be a, a very important role, and and uh, the, that's that's kind of the big key in the, you know the non-conference segment leading up to the conference, and um, you know I think we're all excited to open up. It's hard to believe, you know, February beginning of February you're playing, but uh, it's here. So I know the guys are ready, and I know the coaching staff is ready, and um, it's exciting. What are some expectations you have for the team this season? You know, the, the easy coach answer is just to continue to get better and better every year, uh, every day. But, you know, I think it's a, you know, my goal is to, to make it to the conference tournament. You know, that's something that our guys haven't, basically nobody on our team has been to. And, and you know, moving forward, we want to be playing our best baseball by the end of the year. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's the key, not only for, obviously for this year, but moving forward. And, and you know, that's kind of the minimum expectation in, in my mind is, is, is playing in, in postseason baseball. And that's what, to me, that's what baseball is all about. That's when baseball's, you know, the most fun, when, you, when you're chasing something and, and, and not just looking forward to the end of the season, but, but looking forward to playing your best baseball by the end of the season. And, and, you know, as long as we continue to get, you know, develop every day and keep working hard, you know, I think that's a very realistic goal is to, to be playing, um, you know, in the conference tournament at the end of it, at the, at the end of the year, and then anything can happen once you get there. So, you've been able to reach out to some past FHSU players and get them involved with alumni events and other things. How important is that for you to bring a bit of the past into the program to build for the future? Oh, it's huge. You know, I, and like I talked about earlier, it's you know this program isn't about one person. It's not about it's there's thousands of guys that that have have uh, you know been in their shoes and you know we, we do a team building week when we first get back and you know we had Dr. Sedbrook doing some uh, you know project adventure stuff and then we go to Precision Valley and Lane and Paul's doing stuff w with us and you know both those guys were in our guys situation you know they were in their shoes they both played here and, and uh, you know our alumni game having a lot of guys back and and having those guys talk to the team and tell you know share stories and, and want to see the program you know get back to being very successful and, and, and having just great experiences because there's so many people that that you know this program done has done so much for and they they want to they want to get back and they want to see it continue to develop and grow and it's important for our guys to see that you know and understand there's a lot of people out there that, that are invested in this program and, and that want to see it do successful and and uh, you know you're playing for the guys before you as well you know and, and the guys that are going to be ahead of you you're setting the, the precedent for for the future so you know I think it's 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 huge you know there are all, to me and our guys will, under, will will understand that they're expected to get back to the program they're expected to to, to make appearances you know and to, to support the program and that's that's the key to having a great program no matter where you're at and and uh, you know that's it pays so much dividends and it's just it's good for our guys to see you know, even sharing stories of failures and, and where, you know, the, the successes, but also the failures that they had when they were here. And, and they're, not, they're not alone on that. You know, everybody kind of goes through those trials and tribulations. And, and when you can have other people that have gone through that, it's just, it's just huge for your guys. But just to understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just the guys on our team. You know, there, it's a big family out there. And, and, you know, you're playing for anybody that's put that uniform on before and they'd kill to be in your situation right now and to be able to take advantage of it. Well, thanks for joining me today, Coach, and good luck to you this season. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. When we return, we will break down the rest of this week in athletics. He often climbs to the third floor of Rarick without taking a second breath. No matter when he submits his assignment to Blackboard, it is considered early, even if it is five days late. The line at Starbucks parts when he arrives. He considers the homecoming bonfire a small flame for s'mores. Every time he walks downtown, it's considered a march to Maine. His doodles on scrap paper are framed and hung in Rarick Hall. 
Once he parked in a 30 minute zone overnight and the campus police left him a thank you note and a gift card. I don't always party, but when I do, I register with SGA. Now party responsibly, my friends. Back to This Week in Tiger Athletics. Joining me now is FHSU SID Ryan Prickett, and he's going to help me break down the rest of This Week in Tiger Athletics. So the women's basketball collect two wins at home last week with a 67-50 win over Missouri Western on Thursday. Yeah, a uh, big, big week, week for the women to uh, get those two wins at home uh, against opponents that we saw a little bit further down in the MIAA standings. So you feel like on your home floor, obviously, you know, with us having the success that we've had so far this year, you, you need to get those games and make sure that you stay atop the MIAA standings. Uh, saw a little bit of a, a fight out of Northwest Missouri there on uh, Saturday. A uh, team that, uh, you know, it looked like they were going to live and die by the three-point shot. Mm -hmm. there early on but they were definitely hitting those shots and so they were giving us everything we wanted to handle in that first half and luckily we were we were hitting shots too and so both teams were red hot and almost got to 50 points there uh, for us in the first half and then uh, as we as we go back to that third quarter formula as as always I, I don't know what it was but I, I can't remember how many in a row we scored before they scored in the third quarter but it was like 23 to nothing or something like that before they finally put points on the board in the third so uh, uh, great, great for the ladies to come out when they had the nine point lead and then just instantly put them away and, and have no doubt. So uh, big week for them obviously to stay where they are in the MIAA standings and Washburn just, Washburn's still being pesky. They, they went out on the road and got two wins last week and so they still only have one loss in the conference which is to us and they, they have one less win than we do in the conference right now since they haven't played as many conference games as we have. But uh, with them being on the east side geog geographically and we're on the west side, we play all the teams in the west twice, they play all the ones in the east twice. So uh, right now it looks like the west has, uh, the way the season has sh shaped up, the west is definitely looking like a little bit more difficult schedule. So uh, we, got, we got to keep taking care of our business and just hope that maybe a couple of those teams over there on the east side can pick off Washburn and, and we can get some separation up there at the top. But um, right now the other big thing is to only have one loss in the loss column at this point in the season overall. Uh, huge for regional implications down the road where, uh, you know, now, now it's like, can, can we have the possibility of hosting an NCAA regional? So you're not just playing for a conference championship, but you're also playing for potentially maybe having postseason on your home floor. But Southwestern Oklahoma right now, who we did play in the NCAA tournament first round last year, they have pretty much the same starting five back as they did last year year they only have one loss right now as well and so they're kind of ruling the roost down in the GAC right now the Great American Conference so that's probably our, our top I guess competitor right now for that top position but the NSIC MSU Moorhead uh, they've, they've done pretty well to this point so uh, it's, it's fun to start watching how all these conference races are shaping up but at the same time you're you're looking at that overall record with a lot of teams too and like well okay how much cushion do we have now mm -hmm. to maybe potentially host a regional so yeah and a, a win on the road this week as they go to nebraska and face nebraska carney will be big for that in my double a standings. yeah no doubt and carney has just been one of those up and down teams this year on the women's side uh they they definitely played a good game against us down here back in uh december so you know, it's been a tough win up there for the ladies the last few years. Uh, there's been some really close games. We've just been lucky to pull them out late in those games. So I, I fully imagine that Nebraska Kearney is going to be primed and ready to, you know, try to knock us off. So it's, it's going to be a battle on Saturday, and hopefully the the ladies show up with, with that mindset that hey, we got to take care of business up here today. So. 
And the men also came out on top of Mo West Thursday with an 84 to 74 win inside Gross Memorial, but they did suffer an 81 to 69 loss against Northwest on Saturday. Yeah, a big force to get that win, obviously, against uh, Missouri Western. Stay unbeaten at home up to that point, but then obviously you had number two Northwest Missouri coming to town undefeated. Um, I hadn't got to watch them play that much this year yet. I know their teams the last two years have been pretty darn phenomenal. Uh, number, I, I can't remember if two years ago they hosted the regional, but I think they've, I think if I'm thinking right, they've been the top seed in the region the last two years, and they're well on their way to doing that again. Uh, but last year, their star point guard, who was a senior, he was the national player of the year, his junior year, he got injured right before the NCAA tournament, and they got beat on their home floor in that first round of the NCAA. So they're back again this year, but it feels like they've like reloaded, but a lot of those uh, guys out there right now are just even freshmen and sophomores. So they're going to be scary for years to come yet. And uh, they, they've done a phenomenal job with, with uh, how that program's built up uh, up there in Maryville. Um, but, you know, I thought we played really, really well on Saturday. It's just they weren't missing <laughs> early mm -hmm. on, especially Joey Wittes, the number 30, if anybody was at the game. They are probably like, is this guy ever going to miss uh, from beyond the three-point line mm -hmm. uh, uh, early in that game? And then their point guard, their redshirt freshman point guard, decided to start taking over in the second half. And so uh, it, it was kind of those two were stealing the show for a good two-thirds of the game. And then, and then another one of their players, uh, another young guy, started to heat up right at the end of the game when one of those guys had foul trouble. So uh, it, unfortunately, it just didn't go our way on Saturday. I feel like our guys played a good game. We, we tried to defend our home floor the best we could, but we just ran into a, a team that was just red hot that day. And, you know, they're, they're number two team in the country for a reason. So. And how does that Kearney matchup look on the men's side? Yeah, on the men's side, uh, the Nebraska Kearney matchup, obviously on paper, you feel like, oh, hey, we need to go get this one because they're only one and nine in the mm -hmm. conference. They're down there tied for last uh, in the conference. Obviously, we beat them here at our place earlier in the year. And they, they're a very young squad, too, right now. A lot of their talent is also uh, freshmen, sophomores. So uh, we, we got to hopefully go up there. And that's one of those road games you got to kind of mark like, hey, we really need to go get this one. Because if you look at February, you look at our road games that are coming up, there's definitely some, some really grinding games mm -hmm. out there on the schedule yet. And and, you know, we really feel like, hey, if you got a chance to go get a team that's lower than you in the conference and go get them on their home floor, th this is a big weekend for the men, hopefully, to go get that. So. And to move on for athletics, track and field competed in the Pittsburgh State Invitational on Saturday, where the Tigers had a first place finish in Ryan Stanley in the pole vault event. Um, he with a height of 15 feet and 10 and a half inches. Yeah, a great effort from one of our newcomers to the squad, uh, Ryan Stanley. Uh, you know, that's, that's great to see him clearing those kind of heights already uh, at, at, at the uh, year in college that he is. And that's just going to prove to be good things to come, I hope, uh, in the future. We've had some really good pole vaulters here uh, in the last few years on, on the men's side. And uh, I guess Ryan might be kind of the next one to carry that torch forward as, you know, maybe he'll jump up there and, and get that school record, which is all the way up at about 17 feet. But if you're already clearing that height and our, and, and our coaches do a good job with working with our athletes. That's a provisional qualifying mark for, for NCAA standards. So mm -hmm. if he could just get that notched up just a little bit higher, he might have a chance to, to qualify for indoor nationals here later uh, coming up here in March. So. Uh, Brett Meyer also captured a provisional for the week um, for the second time in a row. Also, he topped his personal best in the mile. Yeah, uh, for the indoor mile, yeah, Brett uh, running what he did. I think it was 4.06. Mm -hmm. I can't exactly remember the, the decimal uh, numbers, but he is now number one in the nation after running that uh, time. And so that's big for him to get on top of that national performance list. Uh, basically, you know, it's, it's going to be tough for some guys to come knock him 
off of that top 15 or so. I don't know if we'll have, see 15 better times than that as we go forward to March, but we, we might. Uh, but Brett uh, obviously has put himself in great position to make the NCAA uh, championships. Also, he's among the top 10 in the 800 meters too. So uh, Brett, Brett is uh, you know one of our top runners, a senior this year. Obviously, last year after the outdoor season was over, he went and ran competitively uh, in that one race in Missouri. Missouri, uh, where he ran a sub four minute mile mm -hmm. in, in outdoor. So Brett's got the capability of doing some, some big things and hopefully he's just getting warmed up right now and can actually lower that time as we go forward. Track will also head to Nebraska this weekend and they'll compete in two events down there. Yeah, uh, another another weekend for the track team to get out on the road. Uh, Nebraska Kearney is going to be a place. Also, uh, University of Nebraska hosts an indoor meet. So we kind of a lot of times split squad between those two places. Um, and you know, hopefully we'll have a few more on the men's side, get get some provisional marks. But right now we, we need to see some more on the women's side. The women the women have, you know, as a team, they've done okay so far, but uh, it'd be nice to see some of those marks come up into the provisional qualifying area. So hopefully they compete hard this week and maybe, maybe we'll gain a few of those marks this week. So. And lastly, for Fort Hayes Athletics this week, wrestling looks to improve on its record in duels Wednesday on senior night after suffering a 30 to 13 loss against Western Colorado last Friday. Yeah, uh, you know, they obviously were in that duel against Western Colorado. We just had a couple things just not go our way late. Uh, I believe it was a 197 pound match. I think we were down 16 points, if, I, if, I, if I'm thinking right. Uh, we were definitely within striking distance, and we almost got a pin uh, in the first period. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, and the guy got loose. We still got four back points for it, but that guy came all the way back to win and, and, and win by pin. So it was just frustrating to see that it was right there in our grasp to get the duel tied up to go into that heavyweight match. And uh, unfortunately, it, it went went the other way, and all of a sudden the, the margin of points there and the team score looked way worse than what it, really the competitiveness of the duel was. So, uh, but, th but that happens sometimes in wrestling. And so, yeah, yeah, this is going to be a great opportunity for the guys to maybe uh, go out with a bang at home. Hopefully, they'll they'll perform well. Obviously, with senior night, and uh, you know that's that's just one of those things where you want to perform for your home crowd. Uh, the last chance you get for the year before you finish up with a few more duels uh, on the road in February. But then it's going to be getting down to NCAA tournament time here before too long. So also, we 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 hope that everybody stays healthy this time of year. So that's that's another critical thing going forward as as we get ready for postseason. Well, thanks for joining me, Ryan. Yep. Tune in next week for another episode of This Week in Tiger Athletics. And to stay up to date on the latest news and information throughout the week, visit TigerMediaNet.com.